Hello everyone, Dr. Abbas Nafi here, and I'm here to take just five minutes to delve into a concept that uh, has not been uh, explained or elaborated um, enough, as, as much as it should have been. So uh, with your attention, I would like to uh, delve into the concept of exam pass rate versus success uh, probability. So what I, what I want, to bring to your notice here is that the EFK exam pass rate is about 40%, right? Um, give or take. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, for whether it's 41.5 or 42.7. The idea is that it's somewhere around in that figure, which does not look as great as people want it uh, or people would like it to be. However, if you look at it from a different perspective, you will actually see that it is really not as bad as you think it is, or as it seems to be. How is that? This is because with that success, with that exam pass rate, the AFK success probability stands at about 85%. Yes, it is 85%. You may ask, how? Let's dive into the numbers and I will explain you how. Here's how. Let's isolate 100 people who start out with the AFK. In the first attempt, 40 people will pass, 60 will not. These 60 will retake the exam, right? This time, the pass rate within this cohort will slightly increase because uh, they're taking it for the second time. So as, and this is as per NDEV data, to about 50%, which means out of 60, 30 will pass and 30 will still not pass. These 30 will attempt the exam for the third time. And again, the pass rate within this cohort will increase slightly further. And yes, in real time, all, all three attempts are, having, um, are, are happening together. So it's difficult to separate those numbers. From NDV data, we are able to separate those numbers. This time, this will, might increase to about 60% which means that within these 30 people, now 18 will pass and 12 still won't pass. And these 12, my dear friends, will determine the overall success or failure probability of the exam, not for an, an individual attempt. So as you can see that the success probability is actually um, in the 80s, which is a very positive sign. And this is what you should be looking at. This is what you should have in your mind when you're approaching this process, the overall success rate and not the exam, the individual exam pass rate. So to conclude, more than 85% of candidates will eventually pass the AFK provided they take their third attempt, which many people don't for some unknown reasons, uh, as that is their best chance. Uh, the, that cohort has a high uh, passing percentage. Uh, when this process repeats itself in the ACJ, the success probability drops slightly. So those who have passed AFK, now they're at ACJ stage. Um, this probability goes down to about 80% within the ACJ cohort, meaning that another 15 to 20% candidates will be removed from the system. In the past, this would have repeated itself at ACS, and the overall success rate of the process would end up being around 60%. But with the recent changes, um, that is going to change slightly. And the last filtering step is now modified, and this may improve the overall success rate of the process and eventually increase it. Thank you for your time. I hope I was able to give you a different perspective on the equivalency process. Take care of yourself. Goodbye.